Cyprus, a Mediterranean gem nestled between Europe and the Middle East, is a land rich in history, culture, and surprising revelations. From its ancient myths and archaeological wonders to its modern-day quirks and unique traditions, Cyprus has much more to offer than meets the eye. So, buckle up as we explore the lesser-known facets of this enchanting destination, providing you with insights that might just redefine your perception of this remarkable country. Positioned in the heart of the Mediterranean Sea, Cyprus stands as the third largest and third most populous island in the region. Nestled between Europe and Asia, this island country has a captivating cultural and geopolitical significance in Southeast Europe. Let's take a closer look at the geographical setting. Cyprus shares its borders with the British Overseas Territory of Akrotiri and Dekelia. To its north lies Egypt, eastward is Greece, southward borders Turkey while to the west, it's flanked by Lebanon and Syria. The capital and largest city, Nicosia, is a hub of activity, closely followed by the vibrant city of Limassol. During the Bronze Age, Cyprus thrived as a strategic location in the eastern Mediterranean, thanks to its abundant copper resources. The island's prosperity was built on a flourishing bronze industry. However, the post-Bronze Age era saw Cyprus under the rule of various ancient powers, including the Assyrians, Egyptians, and Persians. In the Greco-Persian Wars, the city kingdoms of Cyprus aligned with Alexander the Great in 333 BC, becoming part of his vast empire. Subsequently, the island witnessed centuries of rule under the Ptolemaic Kingdom, Roman and Eastern Roman Empires, and later, the French Lusignan Dynasty. The medieval kingdom of Cyprus emerged following the Third Crusade, only to be sold to the Venetians in the late 15th century. The Ottomans conquered Cyprus in 1571, marking a significant chapter in its history. Under Ottoman rule, Cyprus experienced economic and cultural decline, alongside the emergence of Greek nationalism after the Greek War of Independence in 1821. The island was then placed under the United Kingdom's administration in 1878 and formally annexed in 1914. Fast forward to the mid-20th century, and Cyprus experienced a war of independence, emerging as a sovereign state in 1960. However, the crisis of 1963-64 led to intercommunal violence, shaping the island's political landscape. On the 15th of July 1974, a coup staged by Greek dictator Dimitrios Ioannidis triggered the Turkish invasion of Cyprus on the 20th of July, displacing thousands. The events that followed, including the unilateral declaration of a separate Turkish Cypriot state in 1983, remain matters of continuing dispute. Despite its tumultuous past, the Republic of Cyprus today stands as a democracy with an advanced, high-income economy. It holds a very high Human Development Index, ranking 28th in the Global Innovation Index in 2023. Joining the European Union in 2004 and adopting the Euro in 2008, Cyprus has become a key player on the global stage. Number 1. 320 Days of Sun Annually If you're someone who enjoys soaking up the sun, Cyprus might just be your ideal getaway. This Mediterranean island boasts an impressive 320 days of sunshine each year, making it a haven for sun seekers from around the world. Now, you might be wondering, what about the remaining days? Well, fear not. Because even on the days when the sun takes a break, Cyprus has something else to offer, rain. Yes, you heard it right. Despite the abundance of sunshine, Cyprus also experiences more than 40 days of rainfall throughout the year. Now, let's break down these numbers. Picture this, you have over 10 months of glorious sunshine to enjoy. Perfect for lounging on the beaches, exploring historical sites, or indulging in the local cuisine. And when those raindrops do fall, they bring life to the island's lush landscapes, turning Cyprus into a vibrant green paradise. Exploring Cyprus isn't just about the weather though. The local culture and hospitality add another layer to the experience. Whether you're strolling through charming villages, sipping on a traditional Cyprus coffee, or enjoying the warmth of the locals, this island offers a unique blend of nature and culture. For those planning a visit, keep in mind that the best time to fully embrace the sun-drenched days is during the summer months. But if you prefer a more temperate climate, the spring and autumn seasons are equally delightful, offering pleasant temperatures and fewer crowds. Number two, first country to have their map on the flag. The flag of Cyprus. What makes it unique is that it proudly displays the outline of the entire island. 
Now, why would a country choose to put its map on its flag? Well, the answer lies in the island's complex history. Cyprus has seen its fair share of conflicts and divisions between the communities that call it home. The map on the flag serves as a powerful symbol, reminding everyone of the need for unity, neutrality, and peace. It wasn't always this way, and the flag is a poignant reminder of the journey towards harmony. To understand why this symbol is so significant, we need to rewind a bit. Cyprus has a history marked by tensions between its Greek and Turkish communities. The map on the flag was introduced to promote a sense of common identity, transcending the ethnic and cultural differences that had caused strife in the past. The inclusion of the map isn't just a random choice. It's a deliberate decision to showcase the entire island, emphasizing the importance of collective ownership and shared responsibility for its future. The design aims to foster a sense of unity and cooperation among the diverse population. Take a closer look and you'll notice the simplicity of the design, a copper-orange silhouette of the island against a white background. The colors themselves carry meaning, with copper representing the island's historical association with the metal and the white symbolizing peace. Number three, one of the oldest wine producing countries. When we talk about Cyprus and its wine tradition, we're going way back, over 6,000 years. Yes, you heard it right. Cyprus has been cultivating and producing wine on this island for more than six millennia. That's a lot of history in a bottle. While Cyprus boasts such a rich history in winemaking, its global production quantity is not among the top ranks. In fact, it's around the 50th position. It goes to show that sometimes quality surpasses quantity and Cyprus has certainly mastered the art of crafting exceptional wines despite not being the largest producer on the global stage. Now, if you ever find yourself in Cyprus, there's a unique wine you should definitely try, Comandaria. This particular wine stands out because its distinct flavor comes from sun-dried grapes. It's a delightful experience for your taste buds and a testament to the island's winemaking expertise. Number four, oldest perfumes were discovered in Cyprus. When we think of Cyprus, perfumes might not be the first thing that comes to mind. However, archeologists have unearthed a remarkable piece of history that sheds light on the island's fragrant past. Back in the Bronze Age, over 4,000 years ago, Cyprus was home to a perfume factory. Yes, you heard that right, a perfume factory. This period marked a time of significant cultural and technological advancements on the island. Archaeological findings have revealed the existence of this ancient perfume-making facility, providing a glimpse into the sophisticated skills of the people who lived here during that era. It's fascinating to think that, long before the perfumes we know today, the people of Cyprus were already experimenting with the art of fragrance. The perfume factory itself was a testament to the advanced craftsmanship of the Bronze Age Cypriots. They utilized various botanical ingredients, showcasing a deep understanding of aromatic compounds. Imagine the intricate process they followed, combining different elements to create scents that were not only pleasing, but also culturally significant. What's even more intriguing is that these ancient Cypriot perfumes were not just for personal use. They played a role in religious ceremonies and rituals, underlining the cultural significance of fragrance in the society of that time. Number five, it's the original island of love. Our journey begins with a fascinating Cypriot legend that claims the birth of Aphrodite, the Greek goddess of love. According to the myth, she emerged from the sea foam near a rock that is now known as Aphrodite's Beach. The waves breaking over this rock create pillars of foam, said to resemble the goddess herself. It's a captivating tale that adds a touch of mythology to the island. But here's the catch, the place name in Greek, Petra tu Romeo, which translates to the Rock of the Greeks, has a different story to tell. Contrary to popular belief, it has nothing to do with Aphrodite. Instead, it's associated with a Greek hero named Digenis Akritas. Legend has it that Digenis Akritas, in his heroic feats, threw massive rocks at his enemies from this very location. Let's take a moment to appreciate the beauty of Petra II Romeo, the waves crashing against the rocks, the picturesque scenery. It's no wonder this place has captured the imaginations of locals and visitors alike. While the legend of Aphrodite adds a touch of romance, the reality is just as captivating with its historical significance. Speaking of history, Cyprus has a rich and diverse past. The association of Petra II Romeo with Digenis Akritas highlights the island's connection to Greek mythology and heroism. It's fascinating how these legends become intertwined with the landscape, creating a unique cultural tapestry. 
Number six, your wishes can be granted. In the heart of Paphos, there exists a tree shrouded in folklore and whispers of wish fulfillment. This tree, located near the Christian catacombs, is said to possess a mystical ability to make your wishes a reality. How? Well, it's a tradition that's been passed down through generations. Now you might be wondering, how does this wish-granting tree work? It's quite simple, really. Visitors believe that if you tie something to the branches of this tree, your wish will be granted. The tree, adorned with countless ribbons and handkerchiefs, stands as a testament to the hopes and dreams of the many people who have visited over the years. As you can see, the tree is now covered in a colorful array of ribbons and handkerchiefs, each representing a wish made by someone seeking a bit of magic in their lives. It's a sight to behold, and the sheer diversity of items tied to the branches only adds to the mystique. But, of course, the burning question is whether these wishes actually come true. Well, that's a matter of personal belief. Some visitors swear by the power of the tree, attributing the fulfillment of their wishes to this mystical spot. Others view it as a charming tradition, appreciating the symbolism and the sense of community it fosters. And speaking of community, the tree has become a symbol of unity, where people from all walks of life come together to participate in this age-old ritual. It's a simple yet profound way of connecting with the collective aspirations of those who have visited before. Number seven, it's full of cats. Cyprus, the Mediterranean island, has more cats than humans. It's a curious reality that adds a unique charm to this beautiful place. But what's even more fascinating is the existence of an entire monastery dedicated to our feline friends. Enter the holy monastery of St. Nicholas of the Cats in Akrotiri, where hundreds of cats have found their home. This isn't your typical monastery. It's a haven for these cute and fluffy creatures. The legend behind this feline haven is quite intriguing. Legend has it that these cats were initially brought into the monastery to tackle a more menacing issue, venomous snakes. Back in the day, the islanders faced a threat from snakes, and the solution? Well, it involved our four-legged friends. The cats were enlisted to handle the snake problem, and they still play that role today. Picture this, a serene monastery with nuns going about their daily routines alongside their furry companions. The Holy Monastery of St. Nicholas of the Cats not only provides shelter for these cats, but also a sense of purpose. It's a symbiotic relationship that has stood the test of time. Number eight, only capital city in the world divided between two nations. Cyprus, a beautiful island in the Mediterranean, has a capital city with a distinctive characteristic. Nicosia, the capital, is divided by what is known as the Green Line or the UN Buffer Zone. This division dates back to 1974, a tumultuous period in Cyprus's history. In 1974, Turkey intervened in the northern part of Cyprus in response to a military coup. This event led to the island's division, with Nicosia becoming the only capital city in the world to be split between two nations. The Green Line, monitored by United Nations troops, acts as a buffer zone between the two sides. It's a tangible reminder of the complex history and ongoing challenges faced by the people of Cyprus. Even today, United Nations troops patrol this divide, maintaining peace and preventing any potential escalation of tensions. The presence of these troops highlights the international efforts to stabilize the situation in this divided capital. The division of Nicosia has significant implications for the residents. Families and communities find themselves on opposite sides of the Green Line, facing challenges in daily life that are unlike those in any other capital city. Number nine, third largest island in the Mediterranean Sea. Cyprus is the third largest island in the Mediterranean Sea, trailing behind Sicily and Sardinia. Now, that's a notable feat for a place that might not be the first thing you associate with size. Beyond its size, Cyprus is also one of the most populated islands in the Mediterranean. Its vibrant communities contribute to the island's rich cultural tapestry. The warmth of its people and the diversity of its population make Cyprus a fascinating destination. Cyprus boasts a history that stretches back millennia. The island has been home to various civilizations, leaving behind a legacy of ancient ruins, medieval castles, and a tapestry of cultural influences. Cyprus isn't just a sun-soaked beach destination. It surprises with diverse landscapes. From the Trudos Mountains to charming villages and archeological sites, there's more to discover than meets the eye. Number 10, it was also once gifted to Queen Cleopatra 
by General Mark Antony. We all know Cleopatra for her legendary beauty and association with jewelry, but did you know that Cyprus, the Mediterranean island, played a pivotal role in their story? Yes, you heard it right. Cyprus, strategically positioned in the eastern Mediterranean, wasn't just an ordinary piece of land. In fact, it once found itself as a diplomatic gift. General Mark Antony, smitten by Cleopatra, presented Cyprus to her during their tumultuous time together. However, as history often unfolds, their love story met a tragic end at the Battle of Actium in 31 BC Cleopatra, and Mark Antony's ill-fated alliance crumbled, leading to the island slipping from Egyptian hands and returning to Roman control. And just like that, Cyprus found itself back in the hands of the Roman Empire, its strategic importance recognized once again. While it may not sound as romantic as jewels, the geopolitical significance of Cyprus during this era cannot be overstated. Number 11. One of the world's best wreck diving sites. In 1980, the Zenobia, a cargo ship, met an unfortunate fate, capsizing and sinking to the seabed. Surprisingly, after more than four decades, it remains mostly intact. Picture this, carpets, vending machines, and even 108 lorries that sank alongside it, all frozen in time beneath the surface. Diving down to a depth of 42 meters, the Zenobia offers an immersive experience for more experienced divers. The absence of strong currents adds to the appeal, making it a fantastic dive site. What sets this wreck apart is its preservation. It's like stepping into a time capsule as you navigate through the sunken corridors. The clear waters allow you to witness the Zenobia's ghostly beauty in all its glory. Number 12. Only foreign country to host a British royal wedding. Back in 1191, during the time of the Crusades, something quite remarkable happened. King Richard the Lionheart, yes, the Lionheart, decided to tie the knot with Berengaria of Navarre. Now, this wasn't your typical wedding. It was the first, and interestingly, the only British royal wedding to ever take place outside the United Kingdom. The story unfolds as the royal couple embarked on their journey to the Holy Land. However, fate had other plans. During this adventurous crusade, King Richard and Berengaria chose to celebrate their union in the beautiful island of Cyprus. Eight years, that's how long their marriage lasted. Sadly, the Lionheart met his end in France after being struck by a bow and arrow. But let's focus on the historical anomaly here. The fact that Cyprus played host to the only British royal wedding held beyond the borders of the United Kingdom. Fast forward to today, Cyprus stands as a testament to this unique piece of history. A small island in the Mediterranean, witnessing a royal union that defied the conventions of its time. And there you have it, a brief but fascinating historical tidbit. If you enjoyed this journey into the past, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more intriguing stories. Thanks for joining me, and until next time, stay curious.